Well, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about the zoo is the role that we play in the conservation of animals in the wild uh, to help stop these animals that all of us care so much about from going extinct. Everybody, you probably know that there's a lot of animals that face extinction out in the wild. There's rhinos and lions. Well, here at the North Carolina Zoo, even though we are in North America, they're helping things in Africa and Asia because of this cool program called SMART. So I jumped into the back of a zoo vehicle and we went out into the plains habitat with Dr. Richard Bergel and Dr. Drew Cronin so that they could help me understand how their conservation work is aided by SMART. SMART, which stands for the Spatial Monitoring and Reporting Tool. Uh, and it's basically a database and an app that allows rangers in Africa to collect information, data that's necessary in order to get ahead of poaching and prevent poaching before it happens. And they explained to me that it's not that rangers aren't doing a good job at stopping poaching. That is a myth. If you only have a very limited amount of resources and you have a fuel budget that can only allow for three patrols a month, then you have to make sure those patrols are gonna be effective. And that is why a simple program like this on a small device is actually helping. And for example, we have uh, an antelope right back here. And the same way that we're seeing that an antelope here, that if they see one in the wild, they would enter in the species, the number, uh, the sex, footprint on the ground, a snare or some other threat, they can record that. It records the GPS location so you know exactly where that happened. Having this accuracy is key because some of the parks are huge and really hard to patrol. Just one of the national parks that we work in is bigger than the entire state of Massachusetts. It's also built to be very adaptable to these very different locations. Some places where it's used, there's uh, limited literacy rates in the rangers and so you can set up the data to be collected uh, using icons or images. Even if they can't read, you know, I saw an oryx in the field, you can put a picture of an oryx and they can, they can record that they've seen that or a, a shotgun shell or something like that. Uh, They're not in a case, this is the actual phone. It's, it's waterproof, shockproof, and you can, you know, you can bang it on stuff. These devices can, can handle that. And then they're also, just by virtue of taking the device out with them, they're recording information about what they're doing and where they're patrolling. Across the board, there's usually some realization that patrols aren't deployed in the most efficient manner. Whether that's realizing that patrols are staying within five kilometers of headquarters or staying close to roads or staying within the most easily accessible areas of the park. But rangers really respect the data once you can visualize it for them. They can see their effort reflected there on the screen. And even in some places, you're starting to have ranger teams compete for most patrol coverage or who can do a better job. And that's something that you wouldn't see if you just had pen and paper and then three months later they said, oh yeah, you do, you've done a good job on that patrol three months ago. The system is putting high-tech tools in the hands of people who might not have a lot of formal scientific training. So after a little bit of training by the zoo staff, the rangers can operate the system on their own. There's a lot of threats to wildlife. Unless we change things significantly in terms of how wildlife is protected, a lot of iconic species like elephants, like lions, like rhinos, could very easily go extinct in our lifetime. The great news here is that this program isn't just experimental. They told me so many examples of how it's helping. There's a number of examples from parks all around the world where since implementing SMART and then using the information that's provided by SMART, poaching rates have gone down, animal populations have either stabilized or increased, and the, the amount of effort that's being put into protecting these places is also increasing along with that. So if you didn't know, if you visit the North Carolina Zoo, you're directly affecting conservation in Africa and other places through the development of and the implementation of programs like this. Yeah, I'm really proud that the North Carolina Zoo has been able to contribute to global conservation um, at the scale at which we are. More than 60 different countries are using the system. We're having an impact on wildlife populations literally around the world. All right, thanks for watching that video. Remember, there are more videos we've done here at the zoo right here. Check them out and we'll see you in another video.